Welcome back to Africa This Morning. We are now on Table Talk, and today we're going to be discussing telecommunication in Africa. And joining us is Virgil Moshoshwe, who is the CEO of GTEL Mobile in Kenya. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Thank you, bro. Many have not had the history of GTEL. Maybe you can start off with that before we touch on other telecommunication challenges and successes that we have in the continent. Thank you. Um, well, GTEL is a brand that is uh, an African brand. Um, we've been in existence for about eight years. Mm. Um, mostly in the Southern African market. Um, we are a mobile device manufacturer mm. and retailer. So we mostly focus on design and bringing African solutions to um, the mobile phone brands. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing now is we're launching into Kenya, uh, Tanzania, uh, the whole of East Africa, but mostly starting with Kenya. What are some of the marketing strategies that you're adopting in the East African region which are um, pulling from the South and Africa and also presenting unique opportunities for GTEL when it comes to uh, telecommunications? That's a great question. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we have started to do is um, our selling model. And our selling model is totally different from any other uh, mobile device mm -hmm. uh, seller in the market. We're bringing in a, a model of selling which is mostly known in Europe and uh, America whereby mm -hmm. people get a device they get minutes with it, they get data, they get the SMSs, and they don't pay for the phone all at once. Mm. They pay on a monthly, on a monthly uh, installments for 12 months, and then after that they get a new device. So it's a new, unique selling model yeah. that's different from what's actually going on. Interesting. What customer survey or research strategy did you adopt to ensure that that is a plan that will work in East Africa as it has worked in the southern part of the continent? So what we did is when we first, when we first came to Kenya, we looked at what people are, are buying phones, mm. um, what kind of phones are they buying. And what we notice is a lot of people are buying devices that they don't really want, but they're actually just using what they can actually afford. Mm -hmm. So you see a lot of people want a device which is maybe worth 80,000, 90,000, which you can do a lot of um, different features on it, mm. but they are stuck buying one which is maybe 8,000, 9,000, which cannot do a lot of features which they would have wanted it to mm. do. So. When we saw that happening, we noticed that we could have a really good opportunity to have business here because people would want high-end devices, but would want an affordable way for them to be able to pay for it. Mm -hmm. How are you looking at the, the cultural influences on the East African region that will, um, in a sense, motivate some of the buyers to be able to be consistent clients for you? Well, I think, I think one thing which is important for us that, mm. we've, that we've really looked at uh, in terms of the cultural aspect is we've seen that at, at first, people are not, in Kenya, we're not very big on credit. Mm. We saw that uh, most people want to buy things that... I want to be done with exactly it. Exactly. One purchase one and I'm done, yeah. But what our product offers is when, they, when, we, when you start looking at the product offering, mm. when you start looking at how you get the minutes, the airtime and all those things, it starts opening up your mind to different things. For mm. example, uh, most people, when they buy a device, they might spend 30,000, 40,000 shillings on a device and then they spend maybe another 3,000, 4,000 shillings every month on airtime. Yeah. In a year, that ends, adds up to over 30,000 that they're spending on airtime. Mm -hmm. But what we're saying now is, instead of spending that 3,000 shillings, come to GTEL, we'll give you the device, mm -hmm. the minutes, the data, the SMSs, all your needs for that same amount that you're spending on airtime anyway. So when you start looking at it in that perspective, the whole conversation changes and Which we're seeing it happening. you're partnering with other service providers both in the financial sector and also in other communications fields in, Ken in Kenya and also in, in the East African region. Exactly. Yeah, how is that going? Very well. Um, if in terms of offering the financing, mm. we have done that in-house uh, ourselves as GTEL. We've decided that we would provide the uh, actual financing of the handset and the um, the You're literally time. taking on the responsibility exactly. to take on the financial aspect of it. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, and that shows how much we have faith in our own, in our own products. Mm. Otherwise, we would have just outsourced it to someone else to say, look, you handle the financing. But because we know our product is high quality and we are able to back up that warranty on our products, we've decided to take on the financial burden of giving out uh, the devices over uh, 12 months. Mm. In terms of the airtime, We've worked, we've partnered with Airtel in terms of uh, getting the minutes, the data, mm. and we're in talks with other telcos to actually bring in a full package to the whole uh, country. Mm -hmm. When you're looking at the East African region in relation to GTEL, maybe you can start off with the mothership 
and look at the relationship that is being established between Africa and the mothership that is GTL and what are some of the opportunities that are available to ensure that even Africa is considered as the next frontier in business. It is not only considered as the next frontier in business as a market, it is also considered as a partner and not a dumping ground as many have assumed. Great, I'm, I'm glad you brought up that point. Mm. Um, when you look at um, phones for the last couple of years, Africa has been the place whereby you look for cheap products mm -hmm. and you bring them in and you just dump them in yeah. and sub quality products. And what we've tried to do as GTEL is actually try to bring in as an African brand mm. because this is our home. We don't want to bring in something that is, you know, that can't be used or that works for, for maybe. For that perpetuates the dark continent exactly, perception, yeah. Exactly. So um, maybe just to touch on that, if I just take you a little bit back, um, if you look at brands like um, Apple, mm. those are synonymous to America. Mm. And Americans support those brands because they know it's quality and yeah. it's made by Americans. If yeah. you look at Asia, they'll want to buy Samsung in big yeah. because they know that it's made by you know South Koreans mm. and Asians in whole. If you look at Africa, we tend to rely on a lot of these brands to just give us what whatever is they're giving us. But now, as an African brand, we're now focusing to say, look, Africa is not a dumping ground. Mm. Kenya is not a dumping ground. So we're bringing you quality products that you can use and that are unique to Africa. So mm -hmm. if you look at some of our devices, you'll see that we have a battery phone which goes three days. And because a lot of places don't have electricity. But now you have a phone that you don't have to keep on recharging yeah. and doing all that. We have a phone that can charge other phones because there are other people who have phones that might need battery, you mm -hmm. know, phones like that. Yeah. So now we're looking at the African problem, the African, what African solutions that we can come up with and coming up with that. Whereas other brands are not really worried about that. <laughs> They're just bringing in whatever they need to sell to make that money. We'll touch a little bit more about the realities that you're facing on the African continent in relation to infrastructure, as, as you've mentioned. One of the challenges when it comes to success of African initiatives, and let's focus on GTEL at this point, is the sustainability of the, of the brand has to be very practical with today's market. That's looking true. at engaging app creators, looking at engaging software designers who are very on the money when it comes to designs. How are you negotiating or even collaborating with others in the industry who are ready to put forward their creativity into digital and into other brands who are coming under the telecommunications sector? That's a fabulous question. Um, maybe let me start off by saying what we do in Southern Africa mm. and then related to what we want to do here. Um, in Southern Africa, we've partnered with a lot of um, young app developers yeah. to come up with different systems for our phones. Mm. There are certain things which are unique to the GTEL phones, which have, been which have been brought up by ideas of people who are app developers in Southern Africa. Mm. So what we want to do as we launch in, in East Africa is come up with actually uh, what we call a design center, whereby we come up with people who actually have ideas of how to design certain phones we come up with um, different unique apps mm. that can go onto our phones. Kenya is really big on payment systems. There are lots of things. We've been talking to a couple of uh, developers who have who mature developers and those who have actually have new ideas mm. on coming up with some different payment systems which can be l locked to the GTEL device. Um, that's, that's something that we're And really offer diversity. Exactly, yeah. exactly. The other aspect that touches still on collaborating with those who are in the design side of uh, technology would be we have institutions of learning and yes. our challenge is we do not have institutions of learning that focus exclusively on creating product that will be very market friendly, especially yeah. in a technological age uh, as is the case in the 21st century. Are there initiatives that can be pushed and even campaigned for by the African continent and the governments here that would be ensure that then it's not only GTEL that is going Definitely. to be the company that is pushing out a mobile product, but the other companies that will offer competition and present Africa in a new light as a partner in telecommunication? Definitely. Um, mm. Well, what I want to say about that is institutions are very dear to me. Mm. Um, I actually went to a university here in Kenya. Mm -hmm and um, the University of Eastern Africa, mm. Barrington in Eldoret. Um, so um, we're definitely looking at starting to do something with them in terms of the students um, coming on different areas. Mm. It's not because we are an, a phone company, but in, within our company we have so many aspects like you know the, the business side, mm. we have the accounting, we have different areas, different uh, areas which are touched on. So we're looking at bringing in students from uh, different areas of learning to actually come learn the actual business, to actually learn about how do you come up, the whole processes mm -hmm. of how do you design the phone. Yeah. When you design it, how do you bring it in from 
the, man, the, the plant? Mm. How do you market it? How do you work with taxes? How do you work with government? So there are different, lots of exciting um, areas that a lot of the young students can learn from that we are trying to work on. And we're definitely going to be opening our wings to different universities. Mm -hmm. But because I have a connection with that university, I'd obviously mm -hmm. want to start, start, at start at off home there. First, yeah. exactly. Do you foresee a situation where we'll have our own plants in Africa that focus on producing what is ours yeah. for our market and also for the world? Yeah. Because most of the plants that we have will always be either on the Asian front or on the North American front, if not Europe. Definitely. Yeah. Um, well, on that, that's something we've been looking at as a company. Mm. Um, it's in our strategic plans mm. to actually be the first company to have a plant here in Africa. Mm. I think what is the, the problem has been um, a lot of the technology has been housed mostly in Asia. Yeah. Um, they have, and then they also take advantage of a lot of cheap labor, mm. which has which has made prices there almost unbeatable for you to to, to, to be come able up to with. compete with. Yeah. But the way I look at it, I mean, there are people who are doing selling vegetables who are not getting paid as much, yeah. who could get paid a lot more if they learned how to make phones, mm. to put in chips together, to put in screens together. And it just takes um, being able to make that investment to be able now to bring in jobs to the continent. Mm. And as you said before, Africa is the new front. You know, Asia has had a really big boom mm. over the last couple of it years. It had its run, yes. Exactly. Mm. And now that's about to happen in Africa. And I think one of the most important things is actually making sure that we actually have a plant so that the whole process, mm. when we say by Africa, like you said, and made in Africa, mm. we actually have the plants, the chips, we make everything here, the whole process is done. Yeah. So that's something that we're actually looking at into and we hope it, it happens in the near future. The conversation on Africa being the next frontier, especially in mobile, would not be a complete one if we did not touch on, one, the recycling end of it, which we'll touch on a little bit later, but we'll first touch on the realities. You mentioned one challenge. You have presented the continent with a mobile device that stays for three days without charging. Yeah. You have been on the upper side of Kenya in Eldoret, and there's some areas on the northern part and even in other rural areas in Kenya and also in the East African region, not yes. to mention Africa, that does not have access to infrastructure and other amenities that will support the proper use of mobile phones. Mm. What conversations do we have in relation to that to sensitize Africa to be more acute in its approach on supporting technology? Yeah. Uh, one thing that we're really looking at um, in terms of getting devices even out there, mm. smart devices out mm. um, into the rural area, into all those things with certain challenges like electricity and things like that mm. is the power of solar, solar energy, clean energy. And we seem not to be tapping into that as the African exactly. continent. We just keep <laughs> exactly. it, you know, avoiding what is obviously available to us. Exactly. Yeah. So um, think there are simple solutions and things that we've come up with also, things like solar chargers, mm. you know, whereby a solar charger, which can, when you charge it up, when you put it in the sun, it can last for three days charging other devices. Mm. So we're looking at trying to get even things like those solar chargers out there to the different uh, communities. And when people have those kind of things, they can now look into getting affordable smartphones, which mm. they can charge, which they can use. And you know, when people can now communicate and when they can do certain things on their phones, more business can happen. As soon as you can call someone, please bring me mm. this. Please uh, send me this. Exactly. Yeah. Please send me this. You can grow the community just by communication. Yeah. So that's, I think that's a simple solution that we already have and we're looking at putting out. Yeah. Maybe you can share with us at this point what are some, the end product, the moment it has been utilized and as we know, every phone always has a lifeline. Yeah. At the very tail end of the conversation, the phone has to be disposed of. That's Africa true. fails in terms of recycling plants that will be able to take out some of the technological um, defaulted products that will be able to relieve us of negative environmental consequences. What are some of the conversations we have as a company to ensure that we're not adding to the burden that Africa is facing right now in relation yeah. to our responsibility to conserve? That's a, that's, that's a very big challenge. Mm. Um, I know the recycling of phones has not been done in a responsible, in a responsible mm. way. You usually see when somebody's finished with their phone, they Something Even as there's a warning when the, the battery, do not dump this exactly. into, the dump, into the garbage but bin, but you don't have actually, an option. Yeah, and yeah. I think for that, one thing that we, we, we need to get into is actually creating awareness mm. about it as a phone company, because we're actually, doing the ones who, we're actually the ones who are doing the selling. So coming together as a technology, phone companies, telco, telcos, and actually creating that awareness to the public to say, look, when you dispose of your phone, when you just throw it in the bin, these are the consequences that could happen mm -hmm. when it's 
when it's one phone, it might not seem like it's a problem. But when you have millions of people dumping toxic material. Everybody has that one phone that they feel is not really exactly. big, you know, and exactly. then it compounds into a problem. But what actual plan do you have as GTEL to ensure that this is not a problem that is tied back to your company? I think, like what I said, creating mm -hmm. uh, an awareness campaign um, in with, with our products. Um, when we're advertising, mm. letting people know actually that, you know what, when you do this, this can happen. Um, we, we don't have a concrete mm. plan yet, but it's something that we are going to be discussing to find out, look, how exactly can we create, knowing that this is also a new market, also getting advice from different areas like government mm. and NGOs on how best to message that message mm -hmm. and take it out to the people to let, us, to let us know how we can go about creating that awareness. Is there a concrete plan that you have established in the southern part of the continent? Maybe you can pull the best practice from that in relation to recycling. Unfortunately, this, this is a conversation that we've actually started having. Mm. Um, we have not been at the forefront, and this is something that we should have been also in front in, in, just in terms of you know, changing the changing way things the are way. done because yeah. we are an, Af an African Ex exactly, brand. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And that's something that we're now actually coming up with policies around mm. as a company mm -hmm. to actually see how can we go about it and how can we, because it's a very important issue. Mm. Very how soon can we expect details on how to ensure that you're not part of the the part companies of the <laughs> that are destroying the <laughs> continent's environmental Look, uh, um, I'll as soon as possible, mm. I'd say maybe in, in the next quarter, mm. the next quarter, because mm. it's a conversation that, especially here in Kenya, that we're trying to find navigate on how mm. we would message that, that message. So mm -hmm. as soon as we've talked to the different stakeholders, when we're talking about government and NGOs, we'll actually have a clear message on exactly how we can. So by January, at it. least we'll know that GTA will have a plan that will show the continent Definitely. that it does not need to be a dumping ground for technology. Definitely. Let's go to the successes that GTA has managed to achieve and the fact that there's still a frontier ahead of you and you're just dawning into the East African region. What can we expect? Well, let me start off with successes. Mm. Um, in terms of successes, um, we have been in business eight years and we have sold a lot of phones um, in the Southern African region. Um, some of our key things that we have is having one of the slimmest phones in the mm -hmm. world, both um, the slimmest 4G phone and the slimmest um, 3G phone in the world. Um, so that's a, a, design, a design achievement we're very proud of. Mm -hmm. um, a first for us also is being most, the, the telcos are usually the ones who offer um, devices with minutes and, and and data mm -hmm. and all that. But we're the first African um, phone brand to actually offer those benefits mm -hmm. as a phone brand to our consumers. So we're offering something that is fresh, new, unique, mm -hmm. and something that actually solves a problem that we're actually having here in Africa. Mm -hmm. So that's, those are some of the highlights that, 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 that we're happy about. And expanding into East Africa is a big success for mm -hmm. us. Um, East Africa is at, mainly Kenya is, at the f lead in technology. Uh, when you talk about innovations, things like M-Pesa, you know, different technology things, they've all happened here in Kenya. Yeah. And we want to be part of where the best are doing it. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's exciting for us. You've talked of 4G, and we're just, as a continent, we're donning into the 4G era. Maybe you yeah. can share with us what outlook you have as GTEL when you're looking at the frontier. Yeah. Well, you know, the importance of, of 4G is getting information at a faster, mm. faster rate. You're able to view um, videos are much faster. Mm -hmm. um, you're able to do a lot more things. So with 4G, we're looking at putting all our devices out in 4G. So when that happens, all our users will be able to access information faster. They'll be able to get things that which they would not have been able to do before. It's pretty annoying when you're trying to be on a Skype call and you, you can't hear the other person or you're trying to download mm -hmm. something that's it very important and it buffers years. forever. Yeah. yeah so with 4G, that, that's, that, solves, that solves all that. Yeah. And we're bringing it at an affordable um, price for the market to be able to get it. Mm -hmm. So we want everybody to be able to get um, um, 4G devices and to be able to do um, all that they need to do. Hopefully service providers as well will synchronize with um, the forward-looking agenda that GTEL is presenting. And yes. of course, it was great to hear that even as Africa is always looked at as the next frontier of 
In terms of marketing, we are also a, co a continent that is intent on changing the way we are doing business. We're not only uh, going to be supporting other markets, we're mm. going to be partners in terms of pushing the agenda forward. Thank you Definitely. so much for joining us. It was a pleasure to get Thank to you. understand better what GTL is all about and not only seeing it at some of the shops that we have here in Nairobi. Thank I hope you. you've been sensitized on some of the options that are available in Kenya now, even as the East African region is dawning on the availability of GTL products. It has its success on the southern part of the continent. Africa is awakening, the telcos are gaining strength, and we as the African continent are playing as partners when it comes to success in economic ventures. Thank you so much for joining us from the team and myself. Enjoy the rest of your view. Thank you.